Hey ladies and gents, and welcome back. Today we are resoling a pair of snake boots. Yes, a pair of Chippewa, Chippewa snake boots. And for a lot of you folks out there that don't know what snake boots are. They're exactly what they sound like. Yeah. They're, uh, for the guy who goes out bird hunting or just out in the woods during yeah. snake season, and you get this hard canvas and you don't want a snake to be able to bite through it, you're yep. gonna want these. Yep. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, Overhaul them. Exactly, Not, nothing too, uh, too crazy. We're just gonna clean these up. The guy wants a much stronger, sturdier sole on it. And that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, so without further ado, let's get out to the workshop and get these taken care of. All right, so he already has a Vibram Gum Light, which is a crepe rubber sole. It's a little spongy. It's great if you want a little bit of bounce to you, but it's not the longest wearing. It's not the hardest and give you the most traction. Um, so that's why we're actually gonna wind up putting on a Vibram Montagna. Now this is just semen it own, as are a lot of rubber soles. Uh, they sometimes can be stitched on, but oftentimes they are just glued on. I could just barely sand this down and glue another one on, but you guys who have watched our videos know that I am not a fan of synthetic to synthetic, so we are gonna go and replace this midsole with natural leather. All right guys, look, it's carpet padding, <laughs> so. We're gonna take all of this out and uh, put a better, better type of padding in there for his foot. like a cotton factory. All right, so we're gonna get these boots cleaned up because when you're out in the woods, you gotta have good looking boots. No, it's not, it's actually because you want to take care of the leather and you wanna take care of this part right here. Even though it is fabric, it can get clogged up and it breaks down the fibers. So yes, you do wanna clean this as, as well as uh, the leather. Now, a lot of y'all ask what we use product wise on your boots or what you should use on your boots. For the leather, we're gonna use a simple saddle soap. On this canvas up here, we are gonna use a suede cleaner that's actually made for textiles as well. So uh, do not put saddle soap on your textiles. It'll put a film and kind of gum it up. It's, it's not the best thing to use. So let's get on it. Yeah, just throw the whole thing in there. Make you have to use the bathroom. All right, so here's an example where you've got mud that's been caked into the fabric. We're gonna use a suede brush. Suede brush, uh, so I've had some, some comments asking what exactly is it. It has brass bristles in the middle and nylon bristles on the outside. Some will come in all brass, but uh, I like the kind of combo on this. It gets that surface.
little bit of mud in there. All right, so this is the saddle soap. This is great for if you've got a really just nasty boot. Uh, this goes really deep into the leather, deep into the pores to try to pull some of that, that funk out. So saddle soap is a good friend to have if you're gonna have to clean your shoes. down in the welt too. Dirt is an abrasive and if it gets down into the stitches, it can break down the stitches and your shoe will fall, fall apart. So we're gonna let these boots dry for a little bit. Trent's actually cleaning up the other shoe and then while those dry, I'm gonna get over here and start prepping the midsole and cutting out some leather. Let's go. All right, so as you can remember, this had foam. You can see a little residual, look like carpet padding, but uh, we took that out and most of it ripped out and we're gonna replace it with this poronish foam. All right, guys, so I showed you all the pieces a moment ago. We've now stuck them together. And just a quick reminder, this was the original piece and it had sort of this little three quarter uh, piece here that was made out of the, uh, uh, the leather board. And then it had this rubber piece that made up the full midsole. So what we did is we took the full piece of leather and then we took another piece of leather to replace this leather board, stuck them together. Now all we gotta do is just glue it together, put it on the boot, and then we're almost ready to go.
Okay guys, so it's now time to heat these up. We've put several coats of glue onto uh, both parts of the leather and now we're gonna heat them up and stick them. Now, we've said before, we're not huge on cement construction, but when you have leather on leather, it is almost impossible to rip that apart when it's glued together. And uh, I think that's the way, you know, it's a good route to go on these and uh, we're just about done. So let's heat these bad boys up. Okay guys, so these boots are done and the last thing we wanna do is condition the boots. You know we always stress how important that is for the leather. So as soon as we get these nice and conditioned, then we will show you the final product. Okay guys, so this is an oil tan leather. Now to show you whether or not your boots are an oil tan leather, you, I've got my finger inside the boot and you can see that I'm pulling up and that's actually called the pull up. And you can see that as I do that, it gets lighter. And what that is, it's just the oils in that leather kind of dispersing. So on this type of leather, you can use different products. I know some of guys that really beat their boots up and you use them for work. A lot of guys like to use mink oil. I'm not always a big fan. Mink oil does a great job, but it will really darken your leather a lot of the time. So what I like to use is in, as a product like these that are actually made for oil tan leather. And that's what we're going to use today. Okay, so I have two different colors here, same product, but you can see that the stitching on here is a little lighter. And if you if you have a pair of boots like this and you're worried that you may, you know, get that you know, lighter color stitching darker, you can always use a product like the neutral which has no color pigment. But I'm going to put a brown on most of this boot and then just to be on the safe side, I'll take a little bit of the neutral and I'll put that up where the stitches are and that will take care of it. And I like to put this on with my fingers because it gives me a little bit more control, especially when I'm you know, close to stitching that I don't want to darken. Okay, 
we have wrapped up this pair of Chippewa snake boots. But before we go any further, quick question. Do you like the new background, how we start the video and how we're wrapping up each video? Just let us know. Uh, leave a comment down below, give us a thumbs up. Uh, we're trying, after a couple years of shooting these videos, we want to try some, some different things. Plus so. it gives us a chance to use the studio. Yeah, you so. know, we did go to all the work of making it, so anyways. All right, so we have finished up the boots and after all, these are snakeskin boots. So if you're gonna be in snake country, you're gonna want probably the toughest sole out there and we put the Vibram Montagna. Mm -hmm. I did get hit by my pronunciation of that, but you know, Paris, Poe, Milano, Milan, whatever, yeah. tomato, tomato, that's how I say it. So uh, we put that on there. Uh, midsole, we went with... We went with a lot. German oak bark tan leather. It's tough. Tit tan leather. Yeah. It's thin, but it's tough. And it's very weather resistant. Too, yes. So, And also, like I said earlier, uh, the leather on leather, as well as leather on rubber, holds much, much better than rubber on rubber. And that's why a lot of times when we do these videos, we always like to use leather instead of rubber midsoles. They just hold up better. Mm -hmm. And you know, if a snake's striking at me, that's not the time for that sole to be falling off. Yeah. So I think he's good to go. Tripping right into a snake nest Yeah, that's all, that's all he needs. And then blame it on us. So we want to make sure that the uh, customer of these boots was ready to go. Yep. Uh, also, like I said, these are oil tan leather. So we wanted to make sure that we put a lot of oils back into that leather, make sure they are nice, hydrated, and mm -hmm. ready to go. Uh, other than that, what else did we do? Just cleaned them off. Yeah. Uh, really cleaned off the, the material, the fabric on there. They were built well. So yeah. we, we great didn't boot. want to vary too much from the, the way that they were constructed. Yep. We so, just made them better. There you go. So we're going to wrap these boots up, ship them back to the customer. We really appreciate him sending those in to us. Guys, like we always say, if you're interested in sending us your boots or shoes, definitely check out the link down below, potterandsons.com. All of the information is on our website, as well as any of the products that we ever use. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we sell a lot of those. They're on there as well. Also, it's sandal season. It is sandal season. At least from a lot of the parts of the U.S. And we've and already blown through almost an entire batch of sandals that we've just come out with. We got more yeah. coming in yeah. and uh, we'll they're, have those ready. They're and going then the quickly. ladies, lady sandals, uh, we're fixing to start ramping up on those. So yep. stay tuned on those. Be sure to check us out on Instagram, Potter and Sons, and then Southern, Southern Polished. Polished. So, all right guys, I think that just about does it. I hope you all had a great week. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. And again, y'all have a good one.